Hey, good morning. So I don't think I've asked you. So what um, after you graduate, are you uh, what are you thinking? I'm moving. Um, I don't have anything set in stone yet, but as of right now, looks like I'll be going to South Florida. Um, Ooh, I'm wow. at, there's so my boss right now, she's the RD of um, the apartments, and her sister and brother in law operate a Chick fil A down there. And they're looking at opening a second location, and so they need, they want to facilitate like a, a larger marketing team. And so I would be working down there. Sweet. Time. What yeah. part of Florida? Um, it's like an hour north of Miami. Okay. Oh, geez. So I wonder that's like Delray Beach. Yes, or... that's exactly where it is. Oh, right. man. My wife and I have been there like a half dozen times. It it's is. really so nice. I, just, I was able to go there over the break to just kind of check it out and see if the area seems nice and whatnot. And it's so, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very nice. Um, we went on vacation to Miami. Yeah. Um, and then we just drove up one day to look around the area. And I did not like Miami. Oh, yeah. It's a big city. And it's, it's very big. Yeah. But I like Delray a lot. The Beecher area. Yeah, Delray Beach. Um, I guess the last time we were there, um, we stayed at, um, it wasn't a big property that you would have heard of. Um, but it was very, very nice. We had a room that was looked out right on the ocean. Hey, Jacob. Um, and so, but we, there is an amazing hotel north of there called the Breakers. Have you heard of that? It's like where Brad Pitt stays when he's there. I mean, it's like really, really, really nice. So maybe if you go down there and you get settled in, it might be, you know, a must. Yeah. yeah, maybe like, maybe I don't know. Day, but at least doing lunch. I think, you know, we had brunch and it was like a hundred bucks or whatever. So it's, but it was extremely nice. Mm -hmm. So, well, good morning. <laughs> good to see you. Um, yeah, it looks like Kelsey is on board. Kelsey, can you hear me? Sorry. Can you hear, what did you say? Oh, I was just saying, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, soon, I was turning the volume up as soon as you said that. Next you're, you're hit the mute button. So Kelsey, how's mama and them? Good. Good. Yeah, they're good. I'm glad. That's good. It's always good to go home. Yeah, with basketball, like all of our uh, games through the week is at home. And the rest, like the past six weeks have been like all the way games on Saturday. And then I wasn't planning on coming home this weekend. And then uh, we got back earlier than I expected. So. I didn't know what time we would uh, get back next weekend because it's far away. So I decided to come home for a little bit. No, nah, that's great. That's really good. Yeah. All right. Can you see my screen okay, Kelsey? Yeah. Okay, cool. I am going to switch over here. All right. Hopefully you can see my slide there. Oh, 
we might have a quorum. Oops. It's always falling down. Well, happy Monday. <laughs> Hard to wake up, right? Yeah. Kalila, good morning. Happy Monday. I am late. My computer was dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I understand. Is that too dark for you guys? Is that? It might be too dark. Nah. All right. So um, let's see, I suppose Madison will be joining us here pretty soon. So, um, well, another big week, huh? That's good. Good to see everybody. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of traveling the, in this class in three lanes. So lane, the Monday lane is more lecture kind of stuff. Uh, Wednesday, we're working on the block book. And then Friday is our soft skills Friday. Um, so just in case it feels like it's not super planned, it actually is, you know, three different lanes. Um, and then um, in particular, around the soft skills Friday, Fridays, I put up a, a discussion forum. So hopefully, I know uh, a couple of you have already provided um, some feedback on goals that you want to achieve. Um, but if you would do that by the end of today, those of you that haven't, that would be that'd be great. So, and just let me know if you're having trouble finding it. It's in, uh, you know, it's in discovery. So, okay. Any questions about anything? All right, so um, we'll go through a couple of slide decks. Um, these are also in Discovery, so you can um, you can access these. I'm also recording this, so uh, if you want to go back and rewatch any of this, then that uh, is t is totally great. So the first thing to think about is uh, when when we think about marketing research is we're trying to support the idea of the marketing concept. So you guys have all had principles of marketing, maybe some of you with me, maybe some of you with uh, Cindy Dean or Dr. Allen. Um, the content's pretty much the same. Um, and, and, and so research is really intended to inform all of those decisions uh, that we have to make in marketing. So what are our Four P's. Remember our four P's of marketing? I know that's going back a long ways. Product. Promotion. Yeah. Got close, right? Yeah. So the four P's, they've been around for probably 70 years. Um, in the marketing academia world, there's some discussion as to whether it should be four P's or five P's or, you know, everybody's always trying to rock the boat a little bit, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, let's just think about the four P's as product, price, promotion, and placement. Um, and, you know, those, those four P's, they, they sort of evolve. So for example, placement uh, for pre-internet world, placement was about store location. So, you know, if you have a good location, you're probably gonna be okay. If you have a horrible location, you're probably not gonna be okay. Um, but now obviously with the internet and e even more so with COVID, um, you know, if you have access to the web, you pretty much 
have a decent location. You've got to continue to drive people to your location through uh, social media and other ways, but at least you have a seat at the table uh, for uh, potential customers to, to reach out to you. So research is intended to help inform those decisions. And we have to make a lot of decisions around, as you can see, uh, what kind of content do we create? Um, you know, how do we deliver the messages that we need to deliver and uh, communicate and then be able to understand what does the customer really value? So, um, all right. And then from a strategy standpoint, what we're really trying to answer is um, what is it that our company or our organization can provide our customers in a way that is hard to replicate, okay? So for example, if somebody wanted to start uh, uh, another Amazon, would that be easy to do? Let's say, Grace, you know, we just said, you know, Amazon, yeah, it's kind of getting old. Let's start a new one. Would that be easy? No. Okay, so you got to have all the infrastructure. You've got to have all the people to be able to make that work. You've got to go make the whole world know that you're an alternative to Amazon. Really, really hard. So if we had some kind of silly idea about, hey, you know, we're going to try to figure out what would our strategy be to take on Amazon. I think the answer should be don't, <laughs> just don't, you know, it's too hard unless you are, you know, Bill Gates and, um, and, and Tim Cook, I mean, you're like, and, and Elon Musk, then maybe you have a chance, you know, but otherwise probably just don't, don't think about it. Um, so <clears throat> research is intended to help us, uh, understand, uh, in, in form strategy. So what is research? So we are, you know, as you can see here, the process of designing, gathering, analyzing, and reporting information to solve a particular marketing problem. Um, what's the, one of the biggest ways we can get information about a market that we're trying to break into, let's say. If I wanted to find out what should additional programs, uh, what additional programs should be offered at Asbury, how would I go find out about that? Yeah, okay, let's go talk to some people, right? You know, what's missing? You know, what could be better? Um, what are some aspects of Asbury that are behind other schools or friends that you've been with? Maybe what are some areas of strengths that we ought to be promoting? So we're kind of trying to understand that uh, a bit as well. So we could talk to people. What else could we do? Could we go to the library and do a bunch of research around, um, you know, uh, th there might be some studies that people have done around higher education. I mean, trust me, people are studying this all the time because I think higher ed, especially a school like Asbury, it's going, we're going through an evolution, you know, how, what is it that brings value to you guys? And it may be different for you versus your parents versus your friends. And so we want to understand that we can't just say, oh, you know, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing for a hundred years. We can't do that. You know, and really no organization can, can do that. So research is uh, intended to help answer some of those, those big questions. Um, and then, well, you can, we don't have to read that definition necessarily. Um, again, if we think about research, it is a process. Um, I may have mentioned this in here before, and I know I've mentioned it in 241. Um, what is the discipline that 
the leading marketing uh, <clears throat> kind of the, I guess what I would say is the leading marketing uh, scholars. What is the discipline that they were trained in? It's surprising. Anybody know? What did they study in college? What did they study in college? Uh, close. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. One psychology, um, engineering. Does that seem a little weird? I mean, when I think about an engineer, I mean, no offense, maybe your mom or dad or friends, parents or whatever engineers, but I kind of think about, you know, a person with like the plastic, um, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? The plastic protector or whatever what is that oh gosh pocket protector right so and they've got three different kinds of mechanical pencils and and uh you know just you know not necessarily the most stylish kind of person and then you're like well, wait a second i thought marketing was like advertising it's you know flashy and it's exciting and it's sort of over the top so it's interesting that it's really engineers that are uh, uh, the thought leaders. And the reason, one of the biggest reasons is that engineers, if you've ever known one, they tend to be very process oriented. It's like you do A, then you do B, then you do C, then you do D. And my own thought is that um, the engineering mindset is good because when we're trying to figure out a marketing strategy, we're trying to study people and then expose them to different stimuli so that we can figure out what works and what doesn't. So anybody ever have chemistry? Did you have chemistry in high school? All right, I learned only one thing in chemistry. You know what it was? I learned that if you take your hands and you cover up the holes on the Bunsen burner, that the flame shoots all the way to the top and, and you can, you know, so in my infinitely mature junior, uh, junior in high school self, <laughs> I would do that just to, you know, be dumb, I guess. Uh, but you remember in chemistry, you look at different, chemicals and how do they interreact or how do they react when they're uh, brought in uh, contact with one another. And that's a little bit like marketing. We're trying to figure out, okay, for this set of students, when they are exposed to this kind of academic program, what would they think about it? Do they think, man, that's awesome. I'm going to like sign up for that right now or would they go man that's weird i would never do that so we're trying to understand back to your point uh jacob kind of the psychology of what are people thinking um what uh, gets them excited maybe what turns them off um and and so the engineering mindset really helps us uh with, with that now, there's a little bit of a, a distinction here between market research and marketing research. Um, you know, just three, three letters, really. Um, but market research tends to be more um, what's going on in an industry. So, um, you know, for example, um, I, I've done research in, let's say, the security industry. So, um, I guess it was about five or six years ago, I was working for, uh, or uh, the client that I was working with, they make uh, security systems for, let's say, higher education, or K through 12 and higher ed. And so one of the things that they wanted to know is if we develop this new kind of door lock, I'm pointing to the door here uh, in the room, that uh, if I create this new kind of door lock, well, how many new door locks could I sell? You know, is that there are a million doors that would be a potential or would it be like 10? Okay. 
And so that's what this idea of market research is. And that's interesting. Um, and I, I do think that the ability to kind of what we would call market validate. So we want to, before we go spend a million dollars on R and D for a new product, we'd like to know, Hey, is there a real market out there? Do people even want this? Um, so that would be this idea of market research. Marketing research is more about talking with people. And that's where we get into the psychology part, uh, part again, Jacob. So um, if you've ever seen a focus group, anybody ever seen one of these or been part of one, um, you know, but what, what is happening in a focus group is you're basically taking a slice, a randomized slice of a particular audience, putting them in a room like this, and trying to understand what do they need, want, desire. First time I ever saw a focus group back in the mid nineties, it was magic to me. I was like, this is awesome. You get live humans, you put them in a room, you're behind a mirror and you have a moderator that, that interviews them. And it's not just like, you know, Hey, Abigail, what do you think? Hey, Grace, what do you think? Hey, Jake, what do you think? It's, really the collective and there's something that happens there i know rick talks about how group think is not good and i'm not contradicting him but it is interesting when you have a focus group there is this dynamic where um, uh, nathan might be a very very strong personality and you might see Nathan dominate what everybody else says. It's the moderator's job to say, okay, Nathan, I love you, but we've already heard from you. Let's hear from some of the other people, that kind of stuff. Um, but that marketing research can be really, really cool. I and mean, it's helpful for brand managers um, because they, uh, you know, it's vital for them to try to make a good decision back to the marketing strategy part, so. Um, we might say here that marketing research links the consumer to the marketer. Um, you know, whenever I start a focus group, when I moderate groups, I basically talk about um, we're, we're trying to get some wisdom by seeing what are the gaps between the customer and the provider. And sometimes, you know, there, there can be some pretty big gaps, okay? Um, I, I want to kind of throw this one past you. So um, has anybody seen the show, Mr. Robot? Have you guys seen that? I think it's on, might be on Prime. Have you guys seen it on Zoom? No. Well, it stars, um, and I have not seen it, but it's been recommended to me. So I'm, I'm going to make a point to watch it. Uh, but the but the the star of the show is the guy that played. Um, oh gosh, blanking the lead singer of Queen. Gosh, why am I blanking? Um, you guys know who I'm talking about. The band Queen. Yeah, Freddie Mercury, right? Yeah. Have you have you guys seen, uh, what was that, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? Is that what the name of the movie was? I don't know. Did you guys see that? No, I guess it came out three or four years ago. Have you guys seen it? Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, the guy that plays Freddie Mercury is in this Mr. Robot show. And the point of all of this is that... Um, a lot of times companies that make technology like PCs, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put Apple in this category, but maybe like IBM, sort of old, old school kind of technology, if you will. If they think about IT decision makers as like really old dudes that, you know, barely know how to turn on a PC. Well, it turns out a lot of the IT decision makers are younger, maybe a little bit older than you guys, millennials um, that are hip, they're interested in more risk 
kind of stuff, not just, oh, you know, stay the course kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, marketing research would, would help kind of help us see our audience if our uh, IT decision makers are our audience. That would help us understand those people better. I mean, what do they need, want, and desire? Do they want to kind of mix things up and shake things up? Or is it like, I really don't want to get people upset here. I'm just going to kind of do what we've always done. Um, by the way, it's just kind of interesting. How many of you feel like you're more of a risk taker? You know, like to take risks, you know, jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Um, <laughs> what about Kelsey and Kalila? Would you, are you guys risk takers? Don't know, <laughs> Kelsey. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. What What's probably <laughs> the riskiest thing you've done before? Um, I cannot think of anything like specifically off the top of my head. Yeah. But I do want to open like my own business and boutique, so that's kind of a, a risk here because like I live in a small town, so I don't know how that'll work out. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be pretty risky. I mean, most not to be negative, it's just the fact most small businesses don't usually succeed because there's a lot of risk. Um, that's why, you know, you'd want to do a little bit of research to figure out, okay, what do I want to open? What am I going to offer? Th those kinds of things. So, so again, market research is intended to kind of mit mitigate some of that risk. Um, I imagine in South Florida, thinking about, you know, a, a location for Chick-fil-A or any kind of retail, you'd want to do some research. And I guarantee Chick-fil-A does. They, they know exactly where a store should go to succeed. And, you know, the messaging and, and all of those kinds of things. So, all right, we want to identify opportunities. Um, you know, I'd say, for example, Steve Jobs is a once in a generation kind of person. Most companies are not necessarily, or people are not necessarily smart enough just to see stuff. You know, you, you do have your Elon Musks <laughs> that they see opportunity, but for most people, it's very difficult. So. You've got to do some kind of research just to, to identify opportunities or to confirm them or validate them. Um, and, you know, it, in, in particular, it's a bit of a reminder from a review from Marketing 241 is that people don't necessarily buy products just for their intrinsic value. So, uh, for example, you know, when you buy a car, you may not really be thinking about, oh, it's really great because it's made of steel and it's got vulcanized rubber and it's got some leather. Like, well, yeah, that's cool. But what I'm really buying is um, maybe to look cool, <laughs> maybe uh, the ability to get from point A to point B in a certain manner or a certain style. Um, maybe I'm buying rel reliability, I'm buying transportation, maybe I'm also buying safety. So we're really trying to, in marketing research, we're trying to understand what problem is the customer trying to solve? Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think about, so Grace, for example, maybe what's the biggest purchase that you've bought in your life so far? Okay, you bought a car over the summer. Yeah. So what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Okay, did you? Oh, you didn't drive back here, though, did you? Oh, you did. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Would that take a couple days? Yeah. I mean, it was like a five days, but then on the Oh, wow. Okay. All right. 
So where were you? Did you go through like, uh, by the way, this has nothing to do with marketing research. I just want to do one of these trips one day. So did you go through like uh, New Mexico and Texas and South or did you go like through St. Louis? Or? We went up to, I mean, I was with my mom. Like, oh, okay. Nice. Up to Colorado. I went to like two days in Colorado and then moved to Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because once you get through Denver, then it's, I think it's I 70, and that just takes you. It's amazing. Okay. Again, just love Colorado. Nothing to do with marketing research. But it's interesting. When you get just east of Denver, it's Colorado is like the tail of two states. Because, you know, west of Denver, just beautiful mountains rocky mountains and then from east of there it's flat it is like flat 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 so i don't know if you guys have been driv driven through colorado before but it's so cool because it has those two kind of dynamics so all right back to marketing research although i do love driving it's fun too um so Marketing research can help us uh, inform. We talked about the four P's here, right? So we've got product and pricing, promotion, distribution, or placement. Um, we've got selecting target markets. So remember from um, principles of marketing, we talked about market segmentation. So why are there not all just like one kind of car, like back in 19... 18 when um, Henry Ford had, you know, the motto, you can have any car, color car you want as long as it's black. Well, you know, we don't do that anymore. We've got all different kinds of brands, all different kinds of cars. We've got big ones, small ones, medium, um, because people want different things. And so we want to use marketing research to help us identify those segments. Um, and then, and then be able to provide them with what they need, want, and desire. And then in return, um, they would uh, give us compensation for that. All right. Um, you know, <clears throat> if, if you like data, there's all kinds of data out there that you can uh, do some data mining in. That's, that's like a whole big field data science and you know every time we go to a website uh every time we tweet or we like something on social media that's just creating all of this data that you can start to mine okay um i don't know if you guys have ever thought about it but i mean that's like a whole other career if you want to get into data science it's uh you can make a lot of money <laughs> If you can take terabytes of data and then tell executives, this is what you need to do based upon what I see in the data. So something to think about. What do you think, Kalila? Sound pretty good? You want to stare at a computer screen and do a bunch of uh, data queries to figure out what, what it means? I mean, uh, I think you know me well enough to know that I would hate that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'd be hating that. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. You need to be in front of customers. That's where you need to be. Yeah. And both are good, right? So being in front of a customer is great. Being behind the scenes, there's plenty of marketing stuff you can do behind the scenes. Okay. Um. We talked about ba basic and applied research a bit. Um, okay, so we're, we're going to dive into, um, I guess we talked more about sampling and analytics one. You guys have all had analytics, right? One or two. So um, it brings us to this idea of error. Okay, so why is there error when we select a sample? What does that error come from? It might not represent the population. Might not represent the population. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which is what I was going to say. Okay. You can't include everyone in your sample. 
Yeah. Why do we, why do we do a sample? Why don't we just like, you know, talk to everybody? Yeah. Well, you may not, you know, you want to do it quick, quickly, right? Um, it's pretty expensive to talk to everyone, you know, um, but, but back to both Khalil and, and Abigail's point that when we take a sample, there is inherently some error in that. Um, and so if you're a statistician, that means something. If you're trying to make predictions, that means something. So um, without getting into the politics of the most recent presidential election, um, in most polling, there is some kind of uh, plus or minus, right? So you might say, you know, candidate so-and-so, uh, their, um, uh, their, I guess, electability, or you can pick lots of different variables. Their electability is like 55 versus 45 for the other candidate, plus or minus 3% or whatever. And that plus or minus three or plus or minus five is because we know that we can't account for every single person's thought on the matter because we just didn't talk to everyone. So there's a little bit of error in that, okay. Um, now you can spend your whole life studying that stuff. Probably none of you would wanna do that. I don't think I would wanna do that. Um, but it is fascinating um, to me because that um, element of prediction um, is very powerful. Um, it's interesting, again, in at least the past two presidential elections, the pollsters have been pretty wrong. <laughs> and um, I'd say definitely wrong in 2016. And then this year I mean, with COVID and um, mail-in ballots and stuff, it just, I think it got really bizarro in my opinion. Uh, but <laughs> um, the pollsters are getting paid a lot of money to figure out who's gonna win. Um, and it's, it's, to me, the data science part of that is very, very interesting, so. All right. Um, of course, research is, is very uh, data driven. We're trying to take data and turn it into information. Um, I often think about when you go to the doctor and they run some kind of test on you. Um, if, if he or she, your physician, just handed you a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers on it, would you say, Oh, this, yeah, this is perfectly clear. I think I understand it. What would you say, Nathan? Would you say, oh yeah, thanks doc. I, I got all these numbers and these symbols. I think I understand what's going on here. You'd be like, um, okay, doc, um, what does this mean, right? And so that's the difference between data and information. We can have a bunch of data, but what does it mean? And that's what we're trying to do. And as an analyst, we're trying to take data and assign some kind of meaning to it. What does it mean? And put it in context, okay. Uh, you know, most organizations have some kind of IT system. Um, it may be rudimentary. If it's a very small business, that's okay. Um, you know, Microsoft Excel might be, is probably most small businesses IT system. You know, they record or up, upload um, transactions. Um, you could look at some trends, uh, the, those kinds of things. Um, a big organization like a Fortune 500 company They'll use Excel, trust me, I saw it for 20 years and Excel is a big part of what they do. But then they have big systems where they store all the data, uh, hopefully do some what's called big data analysis to try to understand, you know, what new products should we be developing? What new services should we be offering? Those kinds of things. Um, 
you know, a good organization continues to do research. Um, we often in the research world will use the metaphor of, you know, when you're driving a car, you have your rear view mirror and then you have your windshield. So um, a lot of companies mistakenly drive the car metaphorically by looking in the rear view mirror. How's that going to work out for you? If you're driving and always and only looking at the rear view mirror, what's going to happen? Probably. You're going to have, yeah, you're going to have an accident, right? You're going to have, a, you're going to have a problem. Um, and so you, you need to be able to look back, but you also have to really focus on looking forward. What the heck is going on and what do we need to do? Right? So, all right. Any questions about that? All right, let's go to, uh, whoops. All right, I think I actually wanna go here. All right, so we were talking about, excuse me, the research process. That's an eye chart and you can read this, excuse me, at, at your convenience, but this is just saying that there are multiple steps in a, in a research project. Um, I think the biggest one and the one that I think does a pretty good job of integrating what we're doing on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays is this one. It's a little hard to read even on Zoom here, but I'll. So this one is defining the problem. So if we if we try to do a good job in integrating stuff we've been talking about on Wednesdays and Fridays to what we're talking about today, is it easy to go figure out, hey, here's the problem in an organization? Is that easy to do? Do you usually do people usually call themselves out and say, "Yep, it's me. I'm the one that screwed up." Is that what happens? So, now, nah, my department's good, but it's Kelsey. You know, I just can't get her team to do what they need to do, right? Uh, or and then Kelsey, you know, you as the researcher could talk to Kelsey. She's like, "I'm good. It's that Ross guy. It, he's the one that's messing it up, right?" So this idea of defining the problem is harder than you think. Um, it's almost, I, I again use the metaphor of going to the doctor. If you don't feel well, whatever, whatever's going on, it's his or her job to figure out what's the problem, you know? And sometimes you can treat the symptoms but not determine uh, and, and treat the cause of the problems, right? So if we look at our Mount Hillier case, um, you know, we're, we're trying to understand what's the problem, you know? Should we listen to an outsider's perspective? Should we not? Um, you know, if it's an internal problem, you know, where should we be looking first? And so that's where these, this idea of soft skills helps uh, tremendously. Um, you know, in, in research over the years in my career, <clears throat> I would have um, people that were crazy smart that I would never in a million years put in front of a client because they'd be sort of like, you know, Shel Sheldon on, uh, oh, geez, I'm blank. my brain is not on today. What's that show that Sheldon's, a Big Bang Theory, right? Thank you. Um, you know, you, you have a researcher who's brilliant, but they're like Sheldon. They would just walk right in. They would insult the client and be like, okay, get out. We don't need people. <laughs> We're not, certainly not going to pay for someone to insult us, right? Um, and so that's where this idea, the thought of soft skills comes into play when we're trying to define a problem that can be politically pretty sticky. You know, how do we uh, probe around to find a problem when we know that 
if things are bad in the organization, if sales are falling, well, nobody wants to talk about that. It's like, well, let's talk about the ball game or let's talk about something else, right? So let me pause. Any thoughts on that you guys have on just kind of this, this idea of the process and where soft skills come into play? All right, so let's kind of begin to walk through each one of these steps. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this probably goes without saying. Um, some people would say there's 11 steps. Some people would say there are seven. Um, there's no real magic number. And in the real world, you can switch. You can go from step one to step four, and then you go back to step one again. I mean, there's lots of different iterations that can happen um, so that, um, you know, it's not necessarily just the linear process. Um, <laughs> makes me think about um, one of the worst grades I ever got in college was in a class called operations management. I wish we had like operations management here. I think Prof Walsh kind of touches on some of that stuff around MIS and um, uh, a bit of operations. But I basically failed the final project. Anybody want to know what it was? We all had to develop a, sort of like a Gantt chart on how to develop, or excuse me, not develop. I had to, I had to develop a Gantt chart that would describe how to deliver a high quality on time Thanksgiving meal. And I sucked at that. It was really, really bad. Well, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I did a lot wrong, but you know, I'd start cooking the turkey five minutes after I put the bread in the oven. Well, that's not gonna work, right? I mean, the turkey takes longer to bake than the bread. I mean, I just, I didn't do a good job at all thinking about time and how all of those different elements kind of depend upon one another. I'm guessing you all probably are really, really good at that. If you've ever planned an event, how many of you have ever planned an event? You know, you have to kind of think about that. Yeah, I'm with you, Jacob. I, mean, like, oh, there's, there's, I, I really, really suck at that. So, but yeah, if you plan an event, there's lots of different details you have to think about and I have to do this before I do this. Um, you know, for some people that is second nature for me, not so much. Um, fortunately for me in research, the process, you can bounce all around and it may be totally legit because you're studying people. Oftentimes people are inherently illogical and they're going to make decisions that you wouldn't expect. Um, and you have to be willing to kind of uh, be flexible in, in the research process. So not as flexible as in academia. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I have to confess, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with trying to understand the timing in, uh, <laughs> in academic research. In the real world, you get, go to the office on Monday and you've got to have a good answer to a serious business problem by Friday. So you got like four days to figure it out <clears throat> or less. In academia, it's like, ah, oh, you know, a couple of years, no big deal. So um, that's just one thing I'm, I'm kind of struggling with a bit, just to be honest. Um, all right. So Step one, at least as we look at, uh, at, at this uh, particular process, would be, do we really need research? Are there times when maybe we don't need to do market research? What do you think? I mean, if it's just like a little problem, you're not going to want to spend a ton of money on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to kind of do um, sort of a calculation if it's, you know, well, 
you know, we have these coffee cups. We're trying to decide, you know, if if the the color of the cup should be like off white, you know, kind of eggshell. Like, come on. What? <laughs> However, I let me just say, I don't know why, but when Starbucks has the holiday cups, have you ever seen like the Christmas cups? That like makes my wife's whole day. I'm like, it's a container to hold liquid that makes you think better. Not for her. No, no, no. We got, we got all kinds of, you know, evergreen trees and decorations. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, in that case, we probably don't need to go spend a hundred thousand dollars to figure out whether this shade of off white is correct or not. Um, on the other hand, if we were to build out a new, um, let, let's say here at Asbury, I don't think you can get, um, I don't think you can get like a, a nursing degree, can you? I, I think you can get like pre-nursing, you guys might know. Do like a three years here. Okay, so you can do like a three, two kind of thing. Okay. But let's say we wanted to have our own self contained nursing program. Do you think we ought to do some research on that? It's not a trivial thing to, you know, go, go buy a few million dollars of equipment and hire a bunch of new faculty and you know, and then, okay, let's say you build a building and buy all the equipment. Well, you're like 30 minutes from UK. So why would you come down here? Right. So, um, you know, if you're making a big, big decision like that, it would be worth it to say, yeah, before I spend a few million dollars, I really want to make sure this is the right thing to do. So, right. um, it's probably a good time to pause. Anything that we didn't talk about that we should? So uh, Wednesday, we will be forging ahead in our Peter Block book. Uh, be sure to read our assigned um, chapters before Wednesday so we can have a good discussion. Any questions about anything? Uh, be sure to put your two cents in on that discussion forum so uh, so we can you know really Joyce and, and Rick can do a good job of tuning uh, their efforts to what you guys really need so make sense have a great day I'll see you later doing okay yes okay good yeah yeah, Good to see. No, you're you're welcome. Thanks, Brock Ross. You got it, buddy.